Hello traders, this is John Kicklider, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. We've already done a strategy video about uh, the adjustments that we have to make to the new reality that we are dealing with in the markets, and that is significant change in the perspective of the markets making a shift in what our focus is. Less so the traditional economics, certainly less the monetary policy comparisons that we've been making in the past. Uh, and now we're making more of the the assessments uh, for what's happening in the political world. And we've also uh, talked a little bit about how we can better adjust for those uncertainties, something of a Trump strategy. However, it's obviously not just a reality with uh, the U.S. dollar, U.S. assets under uh, the new presidency. It's a general uh, approach that we have to take to the markets. But I, I want to look a little bit more at how complicated this can get. And generally uh, issue a caution so that traders uh, really th think thoroughly uh, through the circumstances for which their trades are being set up and to, I guess, make another appeal uh, to those that uh, don't make a full assessment of what I consider the, the three top uh, market uh, analyses, which is technicals, I think the most, uh, the most popular, fundamentals, I think the most uh, easily recognizable, but perhaps a little bit more difficult, and market conditions. We need to have a good harmony between those three. And as I said before, it doesn't have to be all three, but if you have at least two of them, it's a good setup as long as the third aspect is not running counter to those two uh, combined forces. But in that context, we have to look at what's happening here and now. Uh, we have technical patterns. Let's say we were talking about the wedge from the S&P 500 that we're looking at here, and we uh, see that how this resolved, obviously, uh, through the past couple of days. This was a major break to the upside, but the issue with that bullish break, as we were talking before it actually occurred, was there is a significant asymmetry here. Technically speaking, a rising wedge formation into a break is a very attractive technical pattern. Fundamentally speaking, chasing higher uh, yield in an extremely low yielding market where it's already very expensive, yet yields extraordinarily low returns, is not the best environment to expect follow through. We already talk about this uh, contrast between value and cost, and that's one of our regular uh, points. So this is a contrasting outcome. If it were a break to the downside, there would be a little bit more to work with. Furthermore, we have to think about the market conditions, and this is where I think a lot of the change is coming in. We have to appreciate the fact that these are markets that are very reactive. They are not uh, simply setting up for that big, provocative, and durable trend. Rather, it is very responsive to sudden changes in particularly the political atmosphere, and that doesn't really have a lot of traction. Uh, that in itself is very dangerous. We've talked about uh, market conditions in the past. What kind of trades would I be looking for because I can see what kind of markets I'm dealing with. These are not trend uh, supportive markets. Yeah, you might have a trend uh, pulled out of this uh, past year uh, of performance, but how much of this has actually been inactive trend? All right, not much. The progress is very stuttered, and I don't think that it's going to have a consistency. So this creates greater and greater difficulty. Right, Follow-through is, is not something that I would expect on a move to the upside to overcome the market's uh, short-term, short-duration uh, approach and uh, clear uh, attention spam. We need to have something that is very, very profound, more so on the fundamental side than the technical side. Technicals alone don't really achieve uh, major trend and follow through. Uh, even the ones that don't come on the traditional GDP or something along, along those lines still has a strong fundamental backing in speculative repositioning purely from, let's say, the markets being over leveraged, overexposed. That's a fundamental condition and a market condition rather than a technical condition. So we need that support if we're going to see something substantial. But making it a little bit more complicated and to really, I think, uh, show the situation that we're dealing with, the dollar peso this past uh, week, really. The political 
uh, intensity in this pair is extraordinary. We saw that really uh, leveraged over the past 24 hours when a war of words between the two presidents of those respective countries, the United States and uh, Mexico, were essentially uh, trading uh, not too subtle barbs. Uh, the insinuation that the U.S. was going to go forward with this wall, uh, with President Trump signing a executive order, and then subsequently insinuating that it would be Mexico that pays, something that he said uh, regularly on the campaign trail, which obviously has upset uh, the uh, Mexican government and the Mexican people, and uh, uh, talks, prepared talks that they were going to have, breaks down. In turn, talk of a 20% tariff on Mexican imports in the United States to fund the construction of the wall uh, only further creates tension. Now, that was back, uh, uh, back walked a little bit uh, from the uh, press secretary for the, U uh, the U.S. president, but uh, nevertheless, this is intensity. This makes it very difficult, and I actually ran a poll uh, a little bit ago asking uh, people why the dollar peso did not have a tremendous rally. So let's take a look at it. We'll zoom in here a little bit, and you can see it better. But my question was, why did the dollar peso not have a remarkable move, uh, or at least a clear one, uh, in response to this, these developments, particularly the 20% tax insinuation by Donald Trump? 44% uh, said peso has already discounted. That's a, that's a reasonable assessment. We've had a very significant uh, advance in dollar peso or depreciation of the Mexican currency, so that, that certainly is certainly a factor. 25% uh, say that they are concerned that the, or they believe that the market believes that there could be U.S. blowback. Uh, there are a lot of uh, economic implications here. It's not as simple as, I'm going to put a tariff on a Mexican import, and then everything is solved. Uh, it's There are a lot of uh, different components that will work out here economically, and yes, both the U.S. and Mexico will uh, pay for this. Uh, it's going to uh, be higher supply chain costs for Mex uh, for U.S. Uh, businesses that do business with Mexico. It's also going to be higher uh, costs for goods for those that are purchasing Mexican imports. 13% said that they thought the market was just shell shocked. Deer in the headlights doesn't know what, uh, don't know what to do, so they just kind of sit there. And then obviously 18% uh, have no clue what's going on, uh, which is a fair assessment, and I I do not begrudge that assessment whatsoever. Uh, but this is a reality. We don't even get a clear move, despite this being really in the dead center of all this fundamental uncertainty. We don't have clarity. We have a lot of reaction. We have a lot of volatility. And even that is starting to uh, taper and temper. Uh, looking at things like the VIX, the volatility index, as extraordinarily low as that is, or the uh, emerging market volatility index, which is extraordinarily low as well, which is remarkable considering this, the uh, strides that, are we, that the United States, the world's largest consumer country, is taking towards curbing its trade with these uh, countries whose uh, exports to the United States are essentially vital. This is complacency that we are used to, but for a under a, a far greater uncertainty. So this creates a lot of buildup, a lot of tension, and it should not mean that we are passive. We should not uh, expect that the markets are fixed, certainly not. We should not expect that the markets are steadfast, all right, and they're moving in the trends that will persist. They are not. We should not expect the market to simply move on event risk all right, and carry through. We have some noteworthy event risk over the next 24 hours, including uh, U.S. GDP, uh, Prime Minister Theresa May and U.S. President uh, Trump uh, meeting on trade. And of course, next week, the laundry list just gets bigger. BOJ rate decision, uh, e Eurozone GDP, consumer confidence from the U.S., FOMC rate decision, BOE rate decision, quarterly inflation report. And we have, non-farm payrolls, uh, we have a laundry list of event risk. But what is it going to be able to create? Trend? Unlikely, unless it is a full-scale risk aversion, which that full tilt move can override everything, all right? regardless of what uh, monetary policy develops, regardless of what uh, universal efforts are being made by the G10, regardless of what Donald Trump uh, promises. 
the markets will run in risk aversion because fear is elemental fundamental. All right, but short of that, these are very reactive, volatile markets, and we have to treat them as such. Now, I know this gets complicated, and traders say this is just so uh, difficult to measure. It's so erratic. Uh, I wouldn't disagree with you, but at the same time, these are the realities of the market. We made this same kind of statement, or perhaps uh, the former version, uh, the former wave of traders that decided to call it quits, including hedge funds, over the past eight years because they said everything was being moved by central banks and monetary policy can, it could not be uh, assessed properly and the values were way off. Well, that was a reality that we had to adjust to, and I think we did really well. Uh, we knew what to look for because we knew what we were dealing with. The same conditions now, we know what we're dealing with, political uh, threats and uh, motivations, uh, the breakdown of trade and, and the rise of protectionism, these are realities. They are not impossible to trade. We just have to know what we're looking at. We have to see how comfortable the markets are reading them and when they can start evaluating trends out of it. All right, so be prepared. Know what kind of markets you're dealing with and adjust accordingly. All right, we'll wrap it up here. We'll do our next strategy video tomorrow. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there.